Oh, yes. Are you serious? You got your coffee cup. No, no, no. Not that cup. No, no, no. Folks, come on. You can't drink your coffee out of that cup. You, how many people out there know this? You, and if you're watching right now and you have an Are You Serious Jesus Saves Coffee Cup, could you please make a comment and tell them just how good the coffee tastes in the cup? What? Are you serious, Pastor Begley? Why not? Why not? The earthquake up here is not due till tomorrow. Okay? Today's the day of salvation. Wow, what a day we're going to have, folks. Mm, mm, mm. What a day we're going to have. The radio program today is going to be off the chart crazy. Yesterday, we found out as Pastor Stewart from Scotland, from Scotland, called in and told us that there was a new comet that had just been discovered by a German and a Polish scientist. And this comet that they just found is going to hurt, excuse me, is going to hit the sun today. Today, and that fulfills some scripture. It's Luke chapter twenty-one, twenty-five. There'll be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars, and of course, distress of nations with great perplexity, and the sea and the waves are roaring. We're seeing all this coming to pass. But listen to the radio broadcast today. Three hours of power. When right when Rush is on. What? Why would I compete with him? I'm not competing. He's telling you all the negativities and problems in the political world. I'm giving you the biblical truth, and it's three hours of power. Where? On Liberty Broadcasting Network. That's Liberty. You, what you do is you get right on the internet. You go www.LibertyBroadcastingNetwork.com. Go there. Find the coming apocalypse banner with my face holding a coffee cup. Click right on my face. That will take you to my page. And when you get to my page, scroll down to the bottom. There is the chat room. And you can push the button and listen live while you're chatting. And I'll be on from 12 to 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And of course, I'm also not only on the internet around the world, but it's also broadcasting over the airwaves there in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And that I come on the air there in the central time zone from 11 to 2 Central Standard Time, okay? And I don't know what time it is for Carilla, who called in from England. Don't ask me. I think it's a five-hour difference. Don't even ask me. Or Scotland, or Jamaica, Sam in Jamaica, or some of the folks up in Canada. And People are calling from different countries, and all across the globe, we have a call-in show. We do Bible prophecy, world news events, and whatever, prayer on the spot, salvations, healing, whatever God sends, we pray. And I'm going to tell you a powerful story about Lance of Texas and how faith moved the fire. Ooh, I, I got chills right there when I said it. What? Yes, faith moved the fire. We'll be telling you about that on the radio broadcast today uh, at Liberty Broadcasting Network. And I'm asking Lance to call in in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, now what we got to do right here is I'm going to tell you, let's talk about this comet that was newly discovered yesterday and it's going to crash into the sun today and it's going to get real bright just before it hits, okay? Now, here's uh, some information. Uh, a newly discovered comet diving into the sun on an ill-fated maiden voyage through our solar system, <clears throat> all right? And let's see. Yesterday, which was September 13, 2011, the sun diving comet, it's a comet, is diving into the sun today. Now, it was just discovered by comet hunters Michael Kusak of Poland and Sergi Schmalz, uh, you know I didn't say his name right, of Germany. The icy comet, the visitor, the outer solar system is expected to brighten to first magnitude level before it disintegrates today on September 14, 2011, as it crashes into the sun on a death plunge, okay? 
If you want to actually see it, there's a uh, you can actually see this comet. It's a lean line, and you can see it headed right toward the sun. They got it here. Let me tell you where to find it, okay? It's called the Extinction Protocol 2012 and Beyond. Type it, the Extinction Protocol 2012 and Beyond uh, dot uh, worldpress.com, okay? But just Google the Extinction Protocol 2012 and beyond, it will take you, you'll find uh, <clears throat> this comet diving into the sun today. Meanwhile, folks, as you guys know, we're dealing with the 188-day earthquake cycle that started on February 27, 2010 in Concepcion, Chile. It was an 8.8 .8 quake, so it was the first quake 8.8, or 188. Uh, then, 188 days later, Christchurch, New Zealand. Christchurch, New Zealand was hit with a 7.1 Christchurch. Then, 188 days later, right there in Japan, it's Sundanai, which, uh, which means... A thousand generations was hit with a 9.1 earthquake that was so powerful, 28,000 people died as the quake literally just rattled the nation and sh just, oh. And then a tsunami 30 foot high came ashore. 28,000 lives were lost, and how we pray for the, the country of Japan. And six nuclear reactors melting down. Now, Even when I said it, it hurt me. I heard from one of my supporters from Japan yesterday. Um, I pray for her, her family. I pray for the entire nation of Japan. I do that right now in Jesus' name. Oh, how I wish this had not happened. But I can't change it. Bible prophecy says that there will be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in divers places. But all these are the beginning of sorrow. Well, folks... 188 days later, the earthquake would land according to the cycle, 188-day cycle, and the four corners of the earth, according to the latitude and longitude. Tomorrow, September 15th, if the pattern holds, the United States of America should be hit with a significant earthquake. I pray to God it doesn't. I don't want it to happen. I'm not prophesying it will. I'm not predicting it will, in case you're writing an article about me. I'm just explaining to you the pattern, the 188-day earthquake cycle. And if it does happen tomorrow, then it will complete the four corners of the earth and may be the beginning of a biblical prophecy of where God said he would send the angels from the four corners of the earth. And he said it more than one time. Four corners is not a new thing for God. But in Revelation chapter 7, verse 1, And after this I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth to prevent any wind from blowing on the land. Okay? You first have to establish a four corners of the earth. We may be going to do that tomorrow. Ezekiel 46, 22 says, And in the four corners of the outer court... This is under the old law. It was enclosed 40 cubits long and 30 cubits wide, creating this rectangle that we're talking about, which were the four corners. Also, it had four legs and four golden rings in Ezekiel 25, 26. Again, God's perfect plan, building a table for the shoe bread, the 12 loaves of bread baked every week for the 12 tribes of Israel, eaten by Aaron and his sons and the priest to keep communion with God and also the upcoming Messiah who's the bread of life. Are you saved? We're seeing signs in the heavens, signs on the earth. We're seeing a world of biblical proportions. Are you going to give your life to Jesus? Send me a personal message right here on YouTube on the personal inbox. I want to be saved. I want to be saved. I want to be saved. I'll work with you. I'll help you find the Lord as your Savior. I'll be back.